Hey, this is your main man, your dude bro, Gidro man, with Risk of Rain. Now this game here, it's made by Hoppo Games, and strangely enough it's published by Chucklefish of Starbound fame and some other games. It came out at November 8th, 2013, and it was made by a three-man team. I believe it was kickstarted or greenlit, either or, probably both, honestly. And it's basically a against the time survival type of sort of a you know how they throw the roguelike word around quite frivolously these days. It takes a lot of inspiration from such titles with the procedural generation enemy placement, and it even features um, a Left 4 Dead type um, director AI system which spawns enemies and gives them specific qualities, decides where they'll spawn with which kind of numbers and here we see the character cast is like one two three four five six seven eight nine ten wait one yeah Matt's five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve whole characters goodness me which one of them I haven't unlocked on this save but I am aware which one it is so you'll have your cast of commandos enforcers bandits huntress a janitor robot, you have your engineer, even a miner, a sniper, a little monster here, a loader robot, and a chef robot, and then a mercenary here as the last unlockable. And each one of them comes with different types of skill sets which you'll need to utilize to win the game. Some of them better for some t kind of tasks, and some of them less so. Mainly... How to put it? <laughs> Quite a few of them come with um, invulnerability frame uh, abilities such as the tactical dive of the commando or the vault military training backflip thingy and I think just because I want to give you the, a look of the game I think I'll pick the huntress she's all about the kiting as it says up there it's, it's got a nice little overview of the classes then you have three different difficulties and to be fair the game is pretty darn hard you even have artifacts which are basically modifiers for the games certain types of, well, you can non-randomize the items. I don't know if they actually... I will... Hmm, should I toggle this or not? No, I'll just keep it vanilla now. And basically the story of the game is you're a passenger on the space train kind of thing and you're crash landed and you're the only survivor so you gotta get out. Now on the top right corner you can of, of course see the timer and a difficulty meter and that's quite a big deal here because as time goes on it gets harder and harder which creates kind of a sense of urgency and I, d I do think it really adds up and you can notice the difficulty spiking up hopefully even through the course of this video that is of course unless I get absolutely dumpstered early on of course with these kind of kinds of difficulties they can be a little off-putting to some and this one certainly takes quite a while to master. I'm not gonna say that I'm good at this game or not, because it's nothing to be proud of, is it? But, um, I don't think I do too badly. I've sunk like um, roughly 30 hours on the game in total, and I don't know it inside out, but I know some tricks, I know some tricks. Here we have our first item, a taser, and here's the teleporter which will take us to the next level once we defeat the enemy waves associated with it. And then we'll have the boss, and just uh, it's quite commendable for a game like you can see the sprite artwork here. It's despite the small scale, uh, it, there's a lot of character to these enemies, and even the characters you play as. That's nice. Golden gun is a fairly good item, and there's the boss, kind of a jellyfish thing. The music is quite stellar. Um, I can't pronounce the name. Due to, it, due to it being Greek, but yeah, it was composed by a single man. It was, it's quite great, and it makes for a great listening experience even outside of the game, which is, to me at least, a huge testament to staying power. I quite like it. That being said, the game isn't really without its flaws. Um, hopefully, the further on we get, we'll actually... Well, you can see the amount of numbers here on the screen already when, as I'm sh shooting the enemies down. It gets very cluttered very fast, which can be off-putting. But once you uh, sink, sink a few hours into the game and learn what the items are about and what the enemies can do to you, you'll learn. But still, it's 
probably something that isn't too easily solved, really, considering the nature of the game, because, yeah, there's just gonna be so much thing, so much things going on. We got lucky with a little cooldown reducing ringy from the boss there. So in that sense you can see where the roguelike inspirations for the game come from. All in all a very solid experience of a game. You can see the number two there above the enemies which means that's the number for our golden guns extra damage. Pick up more items with the money. If you save money once you leave the levels you'll actually get it added to your experience which is below our health bar. Now trust each and every one of you can find where that one is. You'll have active items such as this explorer's key, which will, when used, open up, well, all chests in vision. Quite useful, saves us a lot of money, and lets us finagle a chest or two throughout the course of the game. Now, here's one of the interesting things of the game, because you see the remaining enemies, three counter right here. We can take our time, and once we kill them, we might want to look around for more chests to open with our money and the key. But as we do that, the timer will of course keep ticking up, making the future much harder for us. So there's a fine little balance of like hoarding loot and trying to make the most out of what whatever whichever level you're on happens to have in it. And as it says, go to the teleporter to advance to the next level. That'll be the next objective, but I will hide in here. I'll position so that both of these chests are within our field of view and use our active item to open them up. There's a piggy bank for constant gold gain and a syringe for attack speed. Now there's quite a plethora of items and they do actually stack. Uh, like we could pick multiple pieces of these life savings to get, um, well, pretty huge gold gains over time. They do have uh, some of them such like stun items. They have diminishing returns on them so you cannot completely overpower the game just by cheesing your way to a few items, which are not guaranteed for the record, so it is pretty hard to come across a set of items that you 100% and 100 want for yourself. So you'll basically have to do make do with what you got. I am gonna take a little time here to explore though, and here we have one of, again, another one of these interactive curios here on the map, which spawns a little horde of imps. And as we kill them, we gain an item, so we might as well take a little while off to kill them. Because it's a cheap item. Where the hell did the other one go? I... Wow, it certainly got away. Well, he outsmarted me. And... Foremost concern I had with the game when I was starting out is that it seems very zoomed out and... I think it's still a valid piece of criticism. It gets hard to look at sometimes, despite the gorgeous graphics. I mean, for being yet another pixel-based um, title, it still it holds up quite well. The backgrounds especially, they make for nice... You could even set them as desktop backgrounds. Speaking from experience, they're pretty good. And together with the music, it really does set a kind of a mood, even though the storytelling is rather obtuse, I mean, there's not much of it to begin with. I don't think, yeah, I can't access it from here, but you can occasionally tr get a little uh, logbook of, from a monster's corpse, which will explain a little of the surroundings. And this is, of course, we entered the second level. Now there's, I think, 10 or 13 levels to, uh, in total. Some of them have, like, secret entrances and stuff, so can take quite a while uh, before you fi run into some of the levels. So we have a health shrine. Kill the enemies and make use of that. We can see, because it's a mushroom cave, there's different enemies. Gained nothing from it. Sacrificed more health and still nothing. Unfortunate. Might end, us, end up with us getting killed. And yeah, each level includes different types of enemies. Some of them stick between levels, and kind of there's a kind of theme of evolution. You saw the kind of little lizard men on the first level. Those will will encounter them later on in flying forms and such. So it gets kind of curious. But for now, let's just focus on getting forward. 
Yeah, if you can tell by the stuttering and the hammering, I can't really tell what I'm doing myself. I meant to do a kind of a review thing about it, but hey, I just like playing it. It's so damn good, honestly. And yeah, that's... Uh, yeah, here we have the little lizardmen, Lemurians, I believe they were called. And this one has something special about it since due to the different color. Can't tell which of these explosions are my own and which ones belong to the enemies. But yeah, I feel like this game never quite got the attention that it, it that it, in my opinion, deserved. So I was hoping to, maybe even, I mean, high hopes, but I was hoping to rectify that. It does have a um, multiplayer as well, direct connect though, so if it, if it had Steam integrated multiplayer, it would be perfect. And as such, I haven't really had the privilege of checking it out myself. But I imagine the, all the classes work well with their synergies and not so synergies. You can gamble your money away here to get potential items, and we got two out of it, which is quite nice. And as we'll eventually activate the teleporter, we won't have to come back and kill all these enemies that we've left behind most of the time. Sometimes it gets a little picky about which enemies to kill and which ones you can safely leave behind. So, who's to say? Here we have another feature, a drone here on the ground, this little wreck, which we can repair with the power of money. And it'll help us like so. This one I believe is a machine gun drone. I should have probably read the label on it. And more special enemies and there we have our little drone helping us. So yeah, stack up in power as far as you can. Make it to the final level and escape the crazy, crazy planet. It seems like this guy's just having a bit of fun here. Can we get him down? Maybe. Okay, probably not. So just leave them be. It's doing no one any harm there. We have these little containers here on the sidelines, which we can open for some money and health, I believe. Indeed. Should get the chest up there, but I'll risk a shrine. Got a rusty jetpack for our troubles. There's... I can't remember the amount of boss monsters on the game, but there's quite a few. I think like 10 or so. There, so there's on the enemy front there is variety, but after a few playthroughs you'll you'll have seen everything, which is not really a bad thing. It just means you know less things to see. Oh, two of these rings that might be really good. Yeah, see, I like the character because she can shoot and move at the same time. Some of them are a lot more mobile. Some of them much less so. We'll make our way up here and start going for those chests and hopefully find the teleporter. This one's a real pain in the ass to get to, which brings to my mind the level generation. It's not completely random, it's procedural and uh, it basically randomizes your starting position and the teleporter position, but you can find them, like, you'll get a gut feeling to it eventually, you'll learn to, learn to read the game in a way. Seems like this drone's fairly expensive. But yeah, we'll definitely go for that expensive chest over to the left and down side of the level. But at times, yeah, back to the level generation, that is. At times there'll be like a certain amount of caves and stuff which you can enter, at times there won't be, so... There's a degree of randomization, but it's... It's not staggering, shall we say. Looks like the mushroom finally calmed down so we can take his mula. Maybe this one too. And you can see the difficulty has ramped up all the way to medium, which is not yet alarming, but as we progress, they'll start dealing more damage and gain more and more powerful kind of... Think of it like the prefixes from Diablo 2 and 3, where they'll gain fire trails beneath their feet. This one might have, like, lingering damage attacks or something like that. As we said, there's a fire trail, but that's due to our own little gan of gasoline. And it's interesting how the uh, items will eventually create a lot of synergies, but I'll just hope we can display that eventually in practice and during the course of this video. I'm just gonna be playing until a game over and hopefully convince you 
yourself to try that. Oop. Yeah, that is probably one of the few complaints I have that at times it, it gets a rather gets a bit tedious to travel the map back and forth, but that being said, there's still the urgency of difficulty ramping up constantly, so maybe I shouldn't be waddling around the place in the first place. I believe the teleporter for this level will be on the upper parts. This one's a bit more evolved version of the first level's fire elemental wisp things. It's, it's, it's got a curious amount of character to it, really. There's so much they've managed to do with so little, really, when it comes to the graphics. And I do like the... Uh, I hate using artsy words here, but it does have a forlorn feel to it. Which goes hand in hand with the whole lone survivor trope that it kind of pulls off here. But uh, enough analysis. Let's find the damn teleporter. It's not here. I should have seen that. Can let our drones do some work while we move ahead. You can see all sorts of numbers there, and at this point, yeah, it's gotten to the stage where I can't even tell you which ones are by which items. I believe the red ones over the enemies when we deal damage is bleed caused by our knife item. The golden one is, of course, for the golden gun. Then we leave the occasional sticky bomb, we attack faster on low health. Just a staggering amount of items, really. It makes it enjoyable, and of course, every, each and every character benefits from different items more than the others. So there's a lot to be seen, even if the levels and the amount of, well, rather, the variety of enemies you'll be fighting is at times limited. But yeah, it does compensate for that quite well. So a strong, a strong game all around. I was surprised. I think I picked it up at, not at the release, but much afterwards from some Steam sales. So I can't pretend that I'm its number one fan, but I certainly do like it. Seems like we're pretty much roasting and toasting these guys. And this shrine still refuses to pay out. Would be really dangerous to use it so soon. But let's. Hopefully we can take care of these enemies here. Before they care of us. Yeah, and in the end it all requires some degree of focus, really. Because, yeah, it is difficult. And I actually read a few Steam reviews and apparently some people can't tolerate that level of difficulty and more power to them. Wimps! You and I know better, don't we? <laughs> Time to head for the chest up there and then hopefully make our way to the teleporter. As you can see, the difficulty ramped its way up to high, making its way to ha 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 and I can see you levels of challenge. Level ups. Um, I'm not sure how they affect anything really, because it's hard for me to notice concrete differences. There is an item that benefits you from a level up, and that's pretty much the most I've seen of it. Now where the heck could the exit be? And hopefully we'll get a different boss this time. Nice little throw there. Oh, it's all the way down there. So we'll have to backtrack a little and go to that cave. Curious spot. But yeah, that is the level of randomization and procedural generation you'll encounter in this game. Maybe we'll pop this shrine on our way, I don't know. Shouldn't take such a risk uh, before at least killing the boss and its army of friends. You can see the skull icon pop up at the occasional shot. That'll be our cooldowns being reduced by the ring. And I predict the magma worm. Nope, we got the ancient wisp. Some of them don't deal any contact damage at all. With this one you'll want to avoid these purple gouts of fire it spawns every now and then. Like so. And they, these bosses do have their signature items, so to say, so it is possible for us to gain an item which allows us to do that fire attack as well. Quite handy. 
Yeah, and as you can see, it's pretty freaking hectic already. There's an exclamation mark bouncing around because our drone is getting in a bad way. But yeah, now we'll just steamroll through the rest of them and make our way to the next level. Hopefully in time to get to the final level before it gets overwhelmingly difficult. You can occasionally, and at least on some characters more easily than the others, get a run which is so powerful that you can basically infinitely <laughs> stay overstay your welcome in the hostile level environments that the game provides. And it is cool when it happens, just quite rare. Yeah, overwhelming amount of effects, really. Gives you this minute and a half of time to fight these enemies, and after the time is up, you'll need to kill everything that it spawned during that period of time, and then you can venture forth. And all this money that we're hanging on to will get turned into experience, and again, as said, I don't quite know the different... I don't... Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Excuse me. Not familiar with the difference the level that provides in this game. Oh, there's a lockbook. That is nice. A mushroom. You can hear the squiddly going wild on the soundtrack. Heck yes. And then we just make our way out of here. Difficulty climbed up to very hard. I think it caps in 40 or 50 minutes, which is roughly the duration you can expect to play this game for in one setting, if you don't get shit or shattered early on. Might be a snow or lava themed level up next. The conversion rate from money to experience isn't quite great. A sunken, a sunken tombs, of course. Now at the start I mentioned and showed the various characters that the game has and most of them are unlocked through different types of achievements such as clearing the game, some of them through map based objectives which I was hoping to display right here and now but seems like this uh, variety of this map doesn't quite take that into account. But if you play it enough you'll unlock them all. I think the last one mercenary I believe that was unlocked for winning the game like six or five times and since I've reinstalled the game game a few times before cloud saving became a thing on Steam for this game um, I lost my progress expensive drone here would like to get it so it seems like our exit will be down below Aquatic themed enemies. This befits the level. Maybe we'll get this. And a little crabby with electric damage. Curious. There we go. Don't know how many of these you can have at any given time, but they're quite helpful and adorable, some of them. You can see the laser fires fairly rarely, but when it does, it does hurt. With the level variety, you can see we have the underwater uh, physics affecting us, but not our projectiles. It's a little interesting, nice twist, and there you can see one of these artifacts, which we can probably get, but I've already gotten the one, so it is strange for it to show up. Actually, I can't get up, I am... It requires a double jump item. Now I opted to go for a few chests before opening up the portal. Although, to be fair, this run is fairly powerful right now. Let's just get this one and make our way out. Another golden gun. 
curious. Seems like it's roughly doubled its damage, you know. Instead of doing two, it does four. I can enter numbers. Double golems, maybe, as our enemies? Nope. Guessing it all wrong. Now where's this one gonna be? Wait, this is a golem. But where's the imp then? I don't know. Looks like our drones are missing this guy. Constantly. Strange of it to spawn one of these, because this is supposed to be a boss level monster. Which is why I dropped an item there. Perhaps it has something to do with the insane difficulty that we're currently on. And that is a whole heap of baddies. Jesus Christ. Strange of it to spawn all of them right here. And these, you can see the occasional sort of red harpoon that the enemies will shoot at us. And that is from the devil itself. Looks like we lost some of our drones there. Not a, not a big surprise, really, because, yeah. This was a bad heap of baddies. Would be very difficult to handle this if I weren't playing the SD Huntress. This kiting ability is quite incredible. And it dropped a bundle of fireworks. When we activate items such as chests, drones and stuff, it'll shoot stuff at enemies. Not the best item, but if you get a few of them, it'll... <laughs> look pretty at least. There wasn't too many chests on this one, so little word of that. Hate these little dudes. Don't know what they're supposed to be. Would help if I got one of those lockbooks about them. It does have original enemy design to a degree though. I'll, yeah, I'll have to mention that. I mean, of course the sprite graphic graphics bites it bites the game in the ass here cuz can't tell what some of these things are um, if we could aggro this guy up there that would be brilliant cuz now we'll just have to run through the whole level to get to him didn't even clip that guy damn It'll be the last one. Well, hopefully this will pay out with a chest or two on our way there. Some of the levels can be a bit dis confusing in, it, in their layouts, but they often loop around. Like we'll all come to a sort of convergence point soon enough. Don't know why I didn't seem to fit to open the chest, but there it is. The fireworks didn't kill him, so... We'll have to finish that job ourselves. Really hard to nail the skills while jumping. Um, I guess I'll get the drone here before we head off. And as I said, I don't really understand the um, improvements a level up brings, so... I'll just consider it a little better to get a tr drone instead. There we go. Should be reaching the last level soonish. Indeed, this will be the second last actual level. Huh, okay, I had forgotten about this tidy little detail. There's normally lava at the bottom of this little runway here, but on this variation of the level, doesn't seem to be the case. The pot with the question mark here is yet another uh, item giving thingy. You pay the price and then it quickly flashes through a series of items and when you hit the activate button at the right time you'll get whichever item it stopped on. And there can be rare items on the list so quick reflexes are needed for that one. Looks like we're getting a lot of enemies right now. And there we have the flying Lemurians. So, nice little cohesive detail there. Or design detail, rather. Let's take this. Damn, didn't quite get the armor. I remember that being pretty good. A 
little ball thingy here. This one has electric attacks, which are, to be fair, quite annoying because they're hardly dodgeable. You just have to hope to outrun them, really. Running into a little bit of difficulties with the Huntress's main attack, which being the shooting of the bow. Should have probably covered the scales, but yeah, we have this blink for dodging. We have this glaive for passing through enemies, and here we have this explosive arrow for massive crowd control. Let these guys follow us and hopefully we'll find the teleporter soon because the difficulty is allegedly impossible. Uh oh. But yeah, I, I don't feel like I've been dilly dallying, so there is that question of whether it is a fair kind of difficulty spike in as time passes. Maybe it really wants you to rush, I can't really tell, but most of the time I get at least close to the game's ending. Hopefully, are oh damn! So you keep missing these rare items by a second or two. Old man reflexes at twenty-three. Not proud of him. Maybe it's here. No, it's not. Can't tell what those little chutes right about here are for. Perhaps the miner can punch them open. Hopefully, I don't just kick the bucket here. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to jump out of here. And to be fair, no, I can't tell what's going on, so... Whoop, yeah, we're making our way out of those guys. Woo! Can see some of our drones shooting up sparks here. It's not nice to pay the repair bills for those. At least the chemical tank thingy that we've picked up allows us to shoot faster the lower health we are. Helps immensely with the critical heals. Critical hits healing us kind of item. So yeah, synergy there. Now if we only had a reliable way to deal critical hits. Barbed wire gives you a nice little barbed wire outline. That is satisfying. Now give me a rare item. I'll make it this time. Or maybe not. I'll just take <laughs> the crit heal, I guess. It is such a tease when a big good item pops up. Let's open these ones with the key. Boxing gloves are okay. Oh, I was hoping for this boss, because this level has a little turtle thing that swims in the lava, which always just ends me. Never figured out a way to deal with it. Seems like we can just run backwards and keep pummeling them with arrows. Works for me. And then, no dilly dallying. We'll just leave this level as soon as everything's dead. Getting healed by the chunks of meat we walk over from our cube of meat item. And the more we... If we had more of those, they'd heal for more. It is certainly getting to the level where it's <laughs> almost impossible to explain all the things happening on screen. So it would not make for a spectator sport, no. At least the enemies die in lava as well, so that feels fair. And oh yeah, the money automatically hovers to you after it's lingered around for a while, so you don't have to worry about it. At least most of it anyway. Glaive is nice, how it bounces around. Actually, it attacks quite a few enemies. And these should be our last ones. Three enemies, and in indeed, looks like it. That's nice. Check the difficulty again. Now it's on ICU, which is a little frightening. But hey, I'm a tough son of a gun. Temple of the Elders. This will be the level before the last level. And interestingly, interestingly enough, it offers you the choice to go back to loop around the earlier levels if you want after this one. So there's that. 
you can see whenever this guy hits us it deals a whole heap of damage so dodging is super important which makes the classes with some active means of mitigation very very much easier to play than the others for example the engineer lacks a way to actively dodge or block and I have actually had the least amount of success with them whereas this character can dodge with the blink the commando can roll away many different things to dodge them with and this will be our last enemy for this level hopefully we'll make it looks like we got a repeat of the imp enemy here and now we have these big Lemurians, quite cool don't know which enemy it is but it's dealing a shit ton of damage shall I say it's probably these little dudes with their cane sword things hate them yep it's gotta be them you can see another artifact there and freaking elect electric enemies zapping us hate them too Luckily the map has ample grunts for kiting and this hot area sort of has a lot of chests in it usually. So we'll get some fireworks out of it and an item that will help. Reduces the cooldown of use items which will be the master key for us. Not the most useful thing but it'll do. These unused items, there's some of them are just flat out damage dealing things, some of them utility, like this one opening the chests, but I'm completely okay with spending money for them. This will be the level up item I spoke about. But yeah, as besides that I really don't have an idea what the level ups actually contribute. Probably a flat damage and health increase, but probably nothing outside of that. I have not played a lot of the uh, more difficult setting of this, so I can't say how impossible that one ends up being. Probably quite. Let's see if we can get this guy aggroed. Would be brilliant to get these items. Oh, a golden bomb uses our money to damage enemies. No, thank you. The key will indeed be super useful later on. So I'm willing to pay money for this one here. That's a good item. Nice to get very early on. And now let's try for the rare ones. Bah, not getting any rare ones. And it does stop eventually if you don't pick any. Wow, double infusion now. And it does stack as well. So we can start stacking up, I think it's two per kill now. Which doesn't sound like a lot, but you do kill hundreds during the course of the game, so it's nothing to sneeze at. And take care of these chokers down here. You can see the one of them leaving the fire trail again. And our drone shooting at nothing, basically. Then we'll take care of the boss, hopefully we'll get his rare item, which would spawn an imp for ourselves. Yeah, alone the bosses aren't that tough, but when you fight them with the dozens of enemies they come with, they're really quite tough. Oh, this one is really good if I remember. Yeah, all your attacks explode. It's as OP as it sounds. It's like constant crowd control. Oh, one more remaining. Where the heck? So yeah, on a side note, like, stuff like this when it happens, it does suck, but I guess there's no one to blame but me. And the difficulty is about to... well, it's just spiked up to I'm coming for you. Scary! And with this teleporter I will show you the last level, or the option to loop around. So if we choose to visit the earlier levels. Uh, I do believe we'll have to make our way back to this temple level before teleporting to the final level, so it's a bit of a gamble. That being said, I could be wrong. And this level has a gorgeous tune. It 
soon to be completely obliterated by gunfire and explosions, so there's that. You can see the damage is starting to rack up, so getting hit once or twice will pretty much end our end up with us dead. Dead, rather. This level is special in a way where you don't have to actually kill everything even after you activate the boss. You'll just have to make your way to the cockpit of the ship. This would be the crashed ship from the intro cinematic of the game, which I, in hindsight, neglected to show. Oops. Oh, these zapping enemies, they're the worst. There's healing items, there's a dynamite item and another taser. I honestly don't think the mushroom healing will count too much at this stage of the game. So let's take another taser, our third one. So it does stack, but how it stacks I can't tell, because I don't know. I think when it activates we'll see the little lock on top of the enemy mobs. Or maybe that's for something different. Because <laughs> it refuses to activate. Oh well. Here we have this character, which was a boss on the first level and often shows up there. Showing up as a regular enemy here. Shoots these colorful little pallets which you'll have to dodge. They have a slight delay and they home in on where you were standing when they shot them out, so... Constant movement there. You can see a lot of chests and even very expensive chests up there. I think they guaranteed a rare item that was always guaranteed. Go through for running faster, because you gotta go fast. Because if you can't dodge, you gotta outrun them. And if you can't outrun them, you gotta tank them. And I don't think tanking is an option. There is a character, the Enforcer, who is basically dedicated to that. Comes with a shield, so you can block all, all frontal attacks. Quite handy. But this last level serves as a kind of a... It equips you with a... Like, as you can see, there's a... Like, a fuck ton of items, if you'll pardon my French here. And so many drones. And a lot of cargo rooms, so... A lot of stuff to just take. Soldier syringes being quite good. I mean, flat attack speed, who can say no with that? And I'm about to die. Holy hell. It's these dudes with the homing red thingies. They deal so much damage, it's not even funny. Christ. Seems like it's incredibly hard to go through ladders without getting hit by them. Oh, I'll get to show one of the character unlocks here. Although it'll not give us the satisfying character unlocked prompt. Because I already have him. But in this hangar you can find this little cargo and there's a little robot inside of it. Yay! Unlocks the hand, the robot janitor, I believe. And the difficulty is... <laughs> right at the max, so that frightens me quite a bit. But no matter, we'll just have to kid up and go. <laughs> nice of the laser turrets to do that for me. Now let's see if this is passable. If we can, we can't get there. Why would the chest spawn there then? I guess that's the random generator screwing us over. Because, yeah, chests and enemies are largely placed randomly. But this map itself is always the same. Wow, just can't get enough of the soundtrack, it's really freaking good. And then, oh! Wow, okay, that's a new item unlocked. Seems like we leveled up, dropped a banner, and due to that we got the unlock for the attack speed. Looked like some sort of a scarf, so I guess... Yeah, now that we've unlocked the item, it's uh, there's a possibility of getting it as a drop. 
from now on. Don't think I've had that one before. Just to be fair, 200% attack speed is hard to get. I mean, I got it by accident just then. Don't have the money to open this one yet, sadly. I will... Oh, fuck it. Uh, actually, no, I will not use my key. Because if you don't pick up items, you will lose them eventually. And there's a heap of chests in this level which I could open accidentally and thus lose on them later on. You see, it takes quite the amount of pummeling now to get rid of the enemies. It's meant to be eventually stacked against you and, yeah, you can probably tell. This is a nice item. Elites have a chance to drop items. You can tell elites by the color, different colorations and the uh, buffered health bars. None of that is explained in the game though, so... <laughs> I think it, yeah, it kinda expects you to have a fundamental understanding of established game mechanics. Is that a bad thing though? I don't know. It's a whole another can of worms, which I would love to open if I had a format for these videos. Nothing rare here, but crowbar is nice. Probably a little nut to half-life there. Nothing on this hangar, so... Just an effective waste of time, but on the positive side, because a red cloud has a silver lining, after this level of difficulty there isn't any, so it's not gonna spike, it's not gonna get any harder than this. That being said, it's fucking hard. Jesus. I think I'm gonna go all the way down, unless, yeah, it's not where I came from. Cool. Monster Tooth is nice, that is our second one of those. You can see it has the stay alive timer, much like the bosses do in earlier levels here. This might be very dire. Luckily we picked up the double jump. I mean, it's saving my bacon due to these little humanoid enemies not being able to jump and attack after us. So yeah, dodging plays a huge part. I mean, most of the time I can't really tell when projectiles are headed my way. I just mash the dash key pretty much on cooldown when I feel a little threatened or see the health bar going down. So that's the that's the extent of the tactics that I use for this game, or have learned rather. And we made it out just fine with full health too, so if anything it was a gain. This area normally has quite a few items and some golden containers, which I can see one of, so that's nice. Instead of taking the better route here for extra hate hit points, I think I'll take a random item. Could be anything. Might as well open up the containers. These key cards are used on, yeah, as it says, on US Contact Light, which is this level, or the ship rather. They can be used here to open some of the uh, areas a little later on. My god, this thing has a lot of help. Okay, maybe it does get a little harder even after the last level of difficulty. Because, holy fucking hell. Yeah, we'll need more than a first hit kit after this. I'm out of here. Watch out for the red pallets or projectiles, whatever. Because those things hurt. Might as well take a drone, because most of the time I'm jumping and they're being left to do the damage. Disregarding walls there, that enemy. You can stop on these little pedestals to see kind of a little indicator where you are on the ship, which is cute. We want to get to the cockpit to fly out of here. And as you can expect, there's a boss at the end of it. Which one do we take? I think I'll take this. Is it a fire shield? Yeah, it is. Okay. That's a good item. I mean, a percentage-based damage reduction. Sign me up. Any day of the week. A saw blade. That's an active item. You throw it, it does damage. Simple enough. But I'll save this for when we get to the room just above us. Because we'll save a whole heap of money that way. Not that it matters on the last level, to be honest, and there's a scavenger here. You can see he's got all sorts of things. 
explosive bazooka thing of his own and a little ukulele, which is also an item in the game. And uh, yeah, damn Tesla guitar thing. It's the worst. And no, there's no way for me to prioritize targets here, so I'm just keeping the fire key down and when they come off of cooldown I try to use the glaive and the bomb shot to do extra damage. Besides that, I don't know how they're dying. But the answer lies in the items. Jesus Christ, that's a god of damage there. Bit of healing from the chest there. Scavenger drops an item. Dead man's foot, I believe this one's called. Yeah. Not too good. We don't want an item that benefits us from for when we're low. Oh, a lot of chests here. Use the keycard to get in. Open th them all. Time to pick them up. There is a lot of items here. Wow. Got lucky. We'll want to be quick because they will disappear in time. Soldier syringe especially important. And the disappearing med bay with the red outline there will be heading to the cockpit and we can actually use it there to help us fight the last boss. The barbed wire item, if we pick up more of them they stack in a way where they expand. It's hard to see against the white background but yeah you can see it's a little larger now. Goodness me. And we do have one key card, so that'll be used on the upper level. Not before we glade these guys first, though. My goodness, I have certainly been taking my time with this. But hey, I got the unlock. Now I'll open this up in two seconds with the key. Nice. Not too good. A haul, but hey, I'll take it. I mean, it's free. <laughs> Killing for 16 per crit, so that is quite nice. Then we have no more key cards, so we cannot access the armory, which contains a useful item for the boss fight as well. A little sad, but what can you do? Another key. You can't. We cannot use it. Pick it up, use it, and then just stick to it again, because when you use an active item, all other active items go on cooldown as well. Prevents cheating like that. Or cheesing, I should say. We'll repair our drones, because we could use a few friends. We leveled up, we dropped the banner from the war banner item, which is a huge increase to attack speed, so why not? There is a little bit of st strategy in it where when you're close to leveling up you might want to place it near the portals on the later levels, or earlier levels rather. Seems like we're pummeling through the rooks here now, so that's nice. And the last door before the boss fight. He's trying his best there, but wasn't enough for us. <laughs> A whole lot of knockback as well. Just glaive him. And let's head for the cockpit. We're fully healed and pretty much ready to fight. Don't think the enemies will... Oh yeah, they do follow us. Might as well take care of them then. So as you can see, we have the med bay here and... It's a curious environment, then we'll use it and... We have this guy. This choker showing up out of nowhere. Cool sprite work there. And telegraphed attacks. It's easy to learn on the go. You can see he has he often jumps, teleports behind you, and slices down. There's an exploding radius attack. But from yeah, you can see his health pool, and when he hits us, he hits for he hits hard. <laughs> but that's why we have so many items at the med bay up there, so we can use that. But it is not so simple. This will be, of course, the first phase of it. And I think he had a few lines to say to us during the course of fight as we progress. 
the double wicket rings paid off because I can dash just about all the time due to us having resetting cooldowns because of the ring. Avoid the death beam things, of course. And <laughs> yeah, we're not dealing much damage to him. Just pummeling through the shield. I never actually paid attention how we're just dealing pretty much one to him when he has it up. How do we break it then? Normally you can do it with the ghost gun that you get from the armory of the ship, but yeah, I didn't have enough key cards for it. Perhaps I should have looked harder. Got hit by one of those purple beam thingies. Yeah, and here come his little friends. Little worms. Want to avoid that red beam, it deals uh, a lot of damage. They're especially susceptible to these kind of splitting attacks, like explosions, because they have many segments. And you'll want to, of course, um, abuse that effect. Healing a lot per crits as well, so health we don't have to worry about until the last phase, I believe. Or if I just shit the bed right here and start eating these beams. Looks like the other worm had enough. How about this one? I think it's... yeah, it's coming back. Repair the laser drone. It gets more expensive every time they get downed. But I mean, it's the final fight, so... Why not? Now he gets little bodyguard robots. They're not particularly tough, but he starts attacking faster, which is definitely something we'll need to watch out for. A little bit of jumping here and there will let you dodge most of the things. It's a nice boost of money as you kill those two during the um, course of this fight, which is probably why they're there in the first place, so you can repair your drones and get a bit of boost for your golden gun. If in case your run happens to be based on those. Now he has this little shadow form following him. So we just want to pallet them both. Just run backwards and keep shooting. And try to jump when you see him doing the fire on the ground move. Like that. <laughs> Do as I say, not as... Not, don't, not that blah blah. Try that again, shall we? Um, do as I say, not as I do. There we go. Now the shadow dude's back. Spooky. Looks like we're healing quite well from all our crits, so... I think this is one, even at the last level of difficulty, so... Despite it sounding ominous and stuff, uh, it's really nothing to worry, at, worry about. We'll use the healing here. Because why not? And that's the shadows attack. Looks like repairing our last drone costs 11,000 for some reason. Don't know what that's about. If you move too fast, he'll keep doing the teleport attack. And if you're close by, he'll just keep swinging. Of course, every character has kind of strengths and weaknesses, even toward, uh, against this boss. And there we go, we unlocked the mercenary on this playthrough. That is really nice, actually. And then we'll get the end screen. Oh heck yeah, cool game. A little pan on the corpses there for some reason. And then throws us to the credits. You can see some of the items of the game here. And how do we skip this thing? Oh we just hold spacebar. Because I would like to show the tally screen at the end. Pretty much all the enemies listed there. And there was the dev team. <laughs> Welp. And here we go. You get your points, your time, your kills, the amount of bosses, items and gold. And we got some items and then at the end you can check your monster logs here. Which is kind of cute. 
And they do have a pretty nice artwork of them, to, to be honest. It is quite a treat. And then the items. I don't know if this is... This can't be all of them. I believe this is the unlockables. And if I could just find the... There's the scarf thing. But what's it do? I don't know, because I haven't picked it up. And then you have little details on all of them. Done pretty much in character. Because they were on board of the ship. And that's Risk of Rain. Thank you so much for watching. And I do hope you enjoyed it. Despite being however meandering it was for the full hour. So yeah, cheers. Bye-bye. <laughs>